A midweek masterclass uh, from Chris Wilder's men uh, last night, which left Man United fans across the world dismayed, uh, myself included. Hello and welcome to the Sideline Podcast. Hi, Fionn. Hey, now how are you today? I am fine. What are your thoughts? I I just I don't want to talk about this uh, too much. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, so I'm I'm going to let you uh, take it away for this one. Yeah, I mean. A two-one loss. The like Sheffield, they they only got a few good chances, and when they did, they were clear on goal. The defense was all over the place. You know, even when they scored the second one with the deflection, there was just huge gaps in the defense for the Sheffield United players to just run through and hit the ball. And you know, they were doing what they wanted, and United were just letting them attack onto them. But it wasn't even like they were soaking in the pressure. They were just. They were barely defending half the time. You know, we saw them get through on goal a few times and De Gea made a good save or two. And even, like, the whole game, United's attack was just so bad overall. You know, we didn't see Pogba or Bruno step up when we needed it. You know, Matic was... He had a few good moments, a few bad moments in the game. But it was just a bad performance overall. But I think I would prefer if Oli made subs a bit earlier in the match. Because, like, it gets to the point where you're looking at sometimes it's like the 85th minute and he's subbing on an attacker. And you're like, well, if you did that in the 65th or the 70th minute, they might have an impact in the match, you know? And it just gets to the point where I think he's just waiting too late for a substitution. Yeah, it was, uh, well, it was shambolic, really. As the only way that I could describe it, and it really cost Man United, and I don't think anyone uh, really uh, estimated that this was going to happen. And on the topic of substitutions, the camera pans to Edison Cavani, who is furious on the touchline. I don't know if that's just me, uh, or is it just his square jaw? Um, But he looked absolutely (laughs) furious. Yeah, and you know, not to be playing. I mean, he played the last two games, okay. And I mean, the way Martial is playing, he, you know, Edison Cavani is really showing him up, and it's going to be very difficult <clears throat> to get um, the fans back on Martial's side. Actually, speaking of him, would you like to discuss uh, the racial abuse him and Martial? Yeah. Him and Twanzibe. Axel Twanzibe. I got after the game. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's disgraceful. You know, you've lost a match. You have to suck it up. The fans have to suck it up and get over it. And the fact that there's people online willing just because they're behind a screen to just text people racial abuse. It's it's disgraceful at this point. And the fact that it's still happening in this day and age, it's just it's not right and it needs to be fixed. There is a lot Micah Richards is doing a lot to prevent it. I think he has a documentary coming out about it, and he's very active in anti-racism, which is really good. But, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? I just think it shouldn't only be uh, the black community. I don't want to go yeah. uh, too in-depth uh, into it, but I just think you know it shouldn't uh, be the black community and uh, everyone, everyone uh, should be getting involved and I think that it, 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 it belongs nowhere near the game in this day and age. But back to the game. Um, Oliver Burke, the hero for Sheffield. I, he got, he, so he gets the ball. And it is blocked uh, by Twanzibe. And it's uh, you know, a terrible clearance again. And, you know, Martial, he's not closing down. And the ball falls to Oliver Burke in acres of space in front of a startled Martial and he gets the ball again by literally doing nothing. It's amazing how a Premier League club, any Premier League club, never mind the team fighting uh, for the for the league title, it's it's terrible. Obviously, you know, Twanzibe with a an unlucky deflection, but wow. I I couldn't believe it when I was watching it. It was almost as if the Man United defence showed arrogance. As if Sheffield wouldn't wouldn't score at all, you know? Yeah, and I mean, 
Twan Zebe, he had a poor performance, but I think that's all his fault because you have Eric Bailly and you have Victor Lindelof. And I know you're going into it thinking we need to get some experience, so Sheffield are bottom of the league. But, like, you know, he's young and it was his first, it was his Premier League debut. And the defence has been shaky in the past few games. You know, it hasn't looked confident or good. And that's just why I think it was stupid to play Tuan Zebe in this kind of a match where you're better off playing someone like Victor Lindelof, I think, would have been suited to the match. But um, even, I think he would have been better off because obviously we all thought Rashford wasn't going to start because he was limping off in the game before that against Liverpool. He, I think he would have been better off playing Cavani up top, Martial on the left, and subbing Rashford in with that energy because, I mean... Rashford just didn't play all that great. You know, he... All the attacks, just none of them played very well. And especially, he never tr- tracks back at all, Max Rashford. You know, at one point I saw him get back, stand in front of the man, and then literally just stop when the man ran past him. And yeah, we also had Alex Torres in the team. It was an interesting uh, team selection and, you know, one that I maybe not entirely agree with, but even so, this is Manchester United Football Club we're talking about. They shouldn't be losing to Sheffield United at home. Again, it's, it's I suppose it's not something, uh, it's, it's, it's not something that we're not used to. You know, four out of the last ten games at home have been losses. You had the Spurs one, uh, the City one, uh, and the Crystal Palace one, and now this. And it is, it's it's just poor, man. Like, we couldn't register a goal from play. And, you know, part of this was uh, 38-year-old Phil Jagielka at the back. Yeah. Who had an absolutely uh, outstanding perform- performance. Uh, what were your thoughts on him? I mean, he played great overall. His defending, his determination just to defend, to stop the ball getting anywhere near that goal. I think, you know, he was just so determined and he has a passion for that club and you can see it with the way he was playing. And obviously United's goal came from the header from Harry Maguire. But I think it was unfair for the first goal to be ruled out because if if our first goal was to be ruled out, then Sheffield United's goal, first goal, should have been ruled out because one guy's pushing De Gea when he's going out for the ball and then in the next one the United's goal that's disallowed Maguire goes up for it for to head the ball and the goalie runs and jumps into Maguire falls over because you know he's challenged into Maguire and then the ball falls to Martial and he just taps it in and the reason they couldn't go to VAR for that was because he blew the whistle and said it was a free. If he had left it as a goal, he could check VAR. But because he blew the whistle, the only way for him to overturn it is if it was clear and obvious mistake. I thought, you know, if anything, I thought the Maguire goal should have been allowed. Obviously, you know, I'm a United fan, but as, with, with as little bias as I can uh, possibly give you, I mean, Maguire has his eyes on the ball. And uh, Ramsdale should be stronger there, man. Like, he, sh- he should be catching that ball and, and clearing it out. Whereas Billy Sharp I sort of backs into De Gea. And the sole purpose of what he was doing was just to dismantle uh, De Gea. And I really yeah. think, you know, whatever you do for one of them, you do for the other. And oh, it's, it's, it's a terrible decision, really, from the ref. And it was was, I think, a rush of blood to the head and a bit of overconfidence. But, you know, obviously you can't take away from <clears throat> from Sheffield United's performance. Uh, they were brilliant and they kept United at bay. Um, the subs for Manchester United made a bit of an impact. I suppose Shaw, uh, he, he, he didn't play badly when he came on. But that's all we have time for on this episode of the Sideline Podcast. Thank you, Fionn. Thank you, Anna.